everybody, welcome to an Epic My Damn Toys video. Today, we're going to be teaching you guys how to customize your WWE action figures. Yes, we are going to break it down, tell you every single thing that you would ever need when you are customizing your figures. You know, you see some stuff, you see one of my videos, you see a custom Cedric Alexander with a custom vest and all this good stuff going on, and you go, gee, Brad, uh, I would love to do that myself. But you know what? You don't know where to start. You don't know what to do with it. So today, I'm going to teach you exactly everything you will need that you would possibly need in order to customize and we're going to break it down here today and uh, just take you through this custom Cedric Alexander as well because it, it looks pretty fire, fire, fire -rific. So anyways guys, there's a lot of things that come to customizing action figures, especially WWE action figures, but anyways, you know, you have your painting, you have your sculpting, you have your ceiling, you have all the things in between, you have decals that you could, you could take advantage of. I'm not going to get into decals today, this is strictly what we're talking about with painting and things of that nature, uh, sculpting, just basic stuff without any decals this is what you will need so uh, let's go ahead and break it down very simple stuff I'm going to tell you the the paint I use every single thing that you see right here is pretty much everything I use on a given custom you know there are some things missing maybe a screwdriver to you know uh, to crack a torso or maybe you know a heat source a hair dryer or hot water would also help you when switching parts or you know cracking torsos removing head sculpts and things of that nature so those are just some things that you know aren't in the video but those are also needed you know you can go back and watch action figures surgery if you have any questions about that but I don't think I've ever broken down completely like I know I've done some rough drafts here and there but I don't think I've ever dove in and broke it down specifically thing by thing and told you exactly what you will need so let's go ahead and dive right in very very simple stuff but let's go ahead and get started so starting off guys let's go with paint brushes first so paint brushes things that you would need for paint brushes these are my main three brushes right here and I couldn't tell you I, I could not tell you the first John Brown thing about these brushes. Now, there is some information on the side right here, and I can read it aloud to the class. These all three are called fine touch brushes. So you have a 20 slash 0, a 2 slash 0, and a 3 slash 0, and they are all fine touch detail brushes. They all came in the same pack, I do believe, and they are very easy. These are my two main ones. This one I don't use as much, but these right here can get you everything you need. This is for your small details and lines. This is for maybe like the shoes on the Cedric Alexander under this purple color that I added that was done with that bigger brush right there and those are pretty much the only two I need I don't ever really fill in big areas so I don't really ever need you know a big brush like this unless you're painting a bigger area which again typically I don't um, so that, that's I just don't use these. this is why I keep these out of the box I keep these by my station at all times these are just my extras if I ever need an extra one or something like that there's also some repeats of these in there I do believe just in case you know the bristles get effed up and things of that nature but I try to prevent that. You know, it's very important to clean your brushes after every time you use them. Don't let them just sit there and rot or you'll you'll ruin them. So that is it for the brushes, guys. Not not too, you know, not too interesting, nothing crazy or anything of that nature. But, you know, you can't paint brush either. You can't use a paint brush unless you have paint to go with it. So for my paints, these are, I think there's like four or five brands that I use. And this is specific. I don't ever go outside of these brands because there's no need to. These, these brands right here will get you everything that you need, okay? So for the first brand, it is Folk Art Enamel. Now, this is very important that you're listening to me right now because I say right now, do not ever, for any freaking circumstances or case, don't you ever in your whole life use any other colors in folk art paint that is not enamel and it's not silver or gold or bronze. Don't you ever use any other regular color. I cannot stand folk art. I think it's awful. Uh, it chips off really easy. It's real cheap paint in my opinion. You know, other people may be like God customizers with it. I freaking hate it, so I stay far away from it. Unless it's enamel, silver, or gold. That's the only reason I'll ever use it. So that's stuff and something to write down. Folk art, enamel, silver, silver sterling, and metallic gold. The next paint brand that I use, probably my favorite one to use, is Citadel Air. Now, you cannot get this at any stores. I forgot to mention Folk Art. I think you can get it at Hobby Lobby and Michaels. Those are the only two stores that have it. They might have it at Walmart. I don't think they do, though. Citadel Air. Now, this is my favorite paint to use, I think. Uh, this one and the next one we'll talk about. This is Citadel Air, and the only way you can get this is on Amazon or specific hobby shops, like little card shops or, you know, like little board game stores, hobby shops, things of that nature carry this. Uh, it's for like you know, the people that play like I don't even know what they're called like not Dungeons and Dragons but things of that nature these little shops will have this this is very nice it's very water thin and it uh, you guys can see here it's not very thick at all and it works 
absolutely fantastically. So I freaking love the Citadel Air. It's freaking freaking beautiful. I love it so much. The next paint color that we have, guys, or the next paint brand, I should say, is Model Color or Game Color. This is basically the same exact thing. Game Color, I think, is a little bit better in my opinion, but Model Color works too. They're pretty much the same. And you guys can see here, it's again, it's very much like Citadel Air. It's very thin. It goes on very clean. It's just very nice. I freaking love it. It's the best paint that you could buy uh, next to Citadel Air. So uh, I, I recommend those probably the most. But if you don't have, you know, a hobby shop, if you can't get on Amazon, if you cannot buy any of these other paints that we've seen here today, then the best thing that you can do is if you're if you're a baller on a budget and you know you're trying to get some paints that because these right here, these go for like three, four bucks a pop, and so does Citadel Air. It can even go up to seven bucks a pop. So that's pretty freaking expensive, and nobody has freaking time for that. That's why I only have so many colors. I, I wish I could afford a big old set, but that's just not realistic right now. So uh, right here, this is your best bet. Ceram Coat is a is a god tier paint. I've used it mo multiple times. And Apple Barrel. Apple Barrel you can get at your local Walmart. Ceram Coat you can get at Hobby Lobby as well. So you can get Ceram Coat and Folk Art at your local Hobby Lobby. And they may have, I think they have Apple Barrel at Hobby Lobby as well. I could be wrong about that. But Apple Barrel is god tier too and you can get it at Walmart. You can get all kinds of colors at Walmart. Just straight right there in the crafts and art section. But any paint you use, this is the biggest thing. Not only is it about the paint you use, it's about the process of applying the paint. So that is not the last step, guys. You can't just take this bottle, dump it out on a plate. Oh, I'm going to customize right now. That, that won't work. You will get very thick, ugly, stupid, idiot, dumb-looking paint. So I learned from the best, Burnout Ink. This is the way you want to customize. He taught me this, and he's the one that did my Seth Rollins in the black, blue, gray, you know, the really clean-looking Seth Rollins. The best thing you can do, guys, is create a water palette or a color palette type deal like this. And what this is is a little plastic dish tray. You take a sponge, like a you know a 50 cent sponge from Walmart. You cut that up. You put it down in here. You fill it up with water a little bit. You guys can see the water moving around. You put some toilet paper or film paper over it. I, I just use toilet paper because it still works. And you put it over it, and it creates a wet palette. So what you would do from there is you pour your paint on there, and then you would take your brush and you push it down in there so it creates like a watery type substance on the paint so that it makes it really thin and then you apply layer after layer after layer so you get a little bit on there and you paint on in layers so you have a thin layer, a thin layer, a thin layer. That way it's not clumpy paint. Like customizing takes time. You know all these these magical creators like Mad Reaper, Showstopper, Custom Figs, BEW, they don't make a custom in five minutes. They, they take their time because that's what makes it better is because it's, it's thin layers of paint and not just globbed on there like a hobo. So take your time with it, pour your paint in there, you're gonna get it really thinned out and then you're going to customize. It's the best way to do it. And I only do this with these two paints, either uh, Ceram Coat or Apple Barrel. I don't do this with Model Color or Citadel because it doesn't need it, it's already thinned out, it's air. There's also Citadel Layer, but I, I recommend air. It's really nice, it goes on cleanly and you don't have to thin it out at all. You don't have to do that with folk art either because this is already thick and you want this thick because it shows up better for the folk art enamel. All right, so that is pretty much it for painting, guys. I mean, that, that pretty much does it for painting. You know, that's everything as far as paint is concerned. You know, brushes, paints, thinning it out, things of that nature. I guess the last thing I can say is I have this cup. Uh, you fill this up with water and this is to clean your brushes off. I just stick it down in there, whirly, 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 farts in a bag, and then I'm done cleaning it. And then I'll probably run my lips over the bristle of the, of the tip or with my finger like that to make sure that the bristle gets you know straightened out and you know it'll be ready to work again as far as what I hold my paint in guys I usually just take a bottle cap from a bottle of water you know I'm constantly hydrated you know I'm ready to go so I'll just squirt some uh, some paint in here and I'll uh, dip it in there this is for the Citadel air or the model color because again I used my little paint thing with the water in it for my other paints so this is what I use to do anything else Next up, guys, we have the sculpting portion, and what I have here is epoxy. This can be bought on Amazon, I do believe. They may have it at hobby stores, but this is epoxy sculpt A and B, and you just take a small portion of each, and you mix it together. You'll mouth it together, and then you're ready to work with it. And I'm not the best sculptor in the world, so I really can't tell you, but I do have it in my arsenal just in case I want to sculpt. And basically what you do is you mix it together, you apply it, you can sculpt it with X-Acto knife, toothpick, 
Thumbtack, all that good jazz. BW has a great sculpting tutorial on YouTube. You guys should check that out. So if you guys want to go learn how to sculpt, you should probably talk to him because he's a lot better than me. Next up, guys, we have super glue. You know, I use this for other things. You can use it as a sealing method. You can tighten up joints. You can also uh, seal together some torsos if you crack them. So I always have Gorilla Super Glue in my arsenal. Toothpicks are a very big thing as well. I use this to, if I say I get too much paint, like maybe I'm, I'm working on Cedric Alexander right here. I go outside the line. I can take my toothpick right here and I can scrape off. Like say I get some white paint right here on the edge. If I'm, if I'm trying to do this outline right here and I get some on the shorts, I'll just take my toothpick and I'll just scrape that off. And you know, a toothpick isn't very hard. It's, it's got some good uh, mal, uh, it's not made of metal or anything, so it should just scrape right off without damaging your plastic or anything like that. So that is something you can take note of. Always have toothpicks, and also I like to just chew on them randomly when I'm working. Just helps keep me focused like a jackass. Next up, ladies and gentlemen, we have our Dremel. Now, Dremeling is very easy. You know, you just turn the hoe on, and it sands and things of that nature. If you guys missed it, we did do a tutorial video on how to make your WWE action figures bald, and that would require acetone and a Dremel, but basically this is just to sand off some stuff. If you have something on a figure you don't want there, you're trying to tr uh, trim off some sculpt you did, uh, you just turn this on and you just whack it off, whack it off, whack it off, whack, whack, whack it, get, 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 get it off, get off, get off, get off, whack it off. You can get this at Walmart as well. Uh, this is the 7300 model. Very simple stuff. Acetone, this is made for taking off logos or smoothing some things out if you've just dremeled it or sanded it. We did a video on this. Again, the Finn Balor video about making WWE action figures bald. Go check that out. But this can also remove logos. Uh, however, do not put this on a torso and do not put this on trunks because if you put this on trunks, unless you do it very sparingly, it needs to be very small amounts or I promise to God you'll ruin the figure, you'll burn the plastic and it'll eat it alive. It does work better on arms. It works better on head sculpts. It works better on legs, kick pads, things of that nature. But crotch pieces and uh, torsos are made of a different material and it will eat the plastic. So that's just something to take note of. But we have done a video on this before, so definitely go check that out. And then as far as sealing is concerned, guys, this is pretty much what I use for sealer. I do have a can of spray. It's called Krylon Matte Spray. That's a good sealer as well, but this is mainly what I use. It's just Mod Podge Matte and Mod Podge Gloss, depending on what I want for it. You know, if I want some details and gloss, I'll do it with this. And then if I wanted to have the flat finish, like you can see here on Cedric Alexander's vest, I use the matte finish, and that is pretty much it, guys. Pretty freaking simple. Now that we've went through this, let's go ahead and take a look at this Cedric Alexander so you guys can kind of see what we've done here. Uh, I talked about it in a video from a few days ago. I took a Seth Rollins vest, painted it up, painted the CA logo on here, uh, painted over some of the stripes from the Seth Rollins logos in black, outlined it in white, made this little piece purple slash pink to match the rest of the tights, and then after that, I didn't add anything to the back. I felt like it was fine the way it is. I guess I could have went over those black lines with white, but I felt like I liked it. And then going down to the shoes, all I did was paint the outsoles white, and then I gave him uh, purple wrestling shoes just because I felt like it looked pretty cool. I don't know how I feel about it now. I'd love to know down in the comment section below what you guys think. I think it turned out pretty freaking sweet, though. And the uh, Cedric Alexander is looking good, man. Really appreciate it. Really like the way it came out. And I'm excited for it, you know. He'll most likely be wearing this on MDT Live, so you guys can look out for that. But I think that pretty much does it, guys. We ran through every single thing you would need to make a WWE action figure custom. You know, painting, ceiling, all that good jazz in between. Uh, I've ran through everything you will need, I'm pretty sure. If there's anything else that I missed down in the comment section below, please let me know. I'm sure there is, because I always miss out on bull crap when I'm making videos like this. But I hope you guys did enjoy. I hope you guys have a blessed weekend. And I'm still waiting on my Elite Series 71, so hopefully that arrives soon. And We'll get those reviews up. I mean, my God, it's been a week, so it's just, it's ridiculous, man. Like, why do they treat me this way? It's just freaking sad, man. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel for more epic WWE figure videos. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at MyDamnToys, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you.